We're still in Perak Mamalif. Mamalif is a long Perak. We're, we're almost done with it. Um, okay. So now the Rebbe is saying that a person, when they have, when they daven and learn, by the way, he says that's like a Mesiris Nefesh. You're giving up your soul. The Dovey Elech Hashem Nafshi Esa. God, I'm picking up my soul to you. That's a form of Mesiris Nefesh. And he says, even though the person doesn't feel it, nevertheless, the Nisham is davening. And he said, this is, the, you're connecting your mind to Hashem's mind and your words to Hashem's words and the action. And he said, that's how you begin davening every day. And that, then he said, okay, we're going to start. We learned this a bit a little bit. Um, okay. We're going to start like 10 lines in the top of the page. We'll go through the part that we learned already a little quicker and then we'll get back to where we're up to. With this preparation, that a Jew is connecting himself and becoming one with Hashem when they daven. You should immediately learn because the Gemara says you're supposed to go from davening to learning. You're not supposed to just daven and run out to business. You're supposed to learn a little bit. And that kavana you should have the why am I learning Torah? Because I want to become one with Hashem. Also, middle of the day, let's say he was in business. Now he's taking off some time to learn. Before he begins learning again, a little bit of this preparation he needs. A little bit to think, okay, why am I learning? Because this is what Hashem wants me to do. And I'm connecting myself to Hashem. I'm giving up my soul, the Siddhas Nefesh. I'm giving up my soul to Hashem. Kaneda, as it's known, there's certain mitzvahs, the Dr. Rebbe is going to mention some of them. You have to have the proper intent why you're doing it and for whom you're doing it. For instance, when the Benini learns Teda, get the Sefer Teda. When God forbid somebody's getting divorced and they write a get, the divorce. Before the get, you have to verbally say, I'm writing this to this and this man and this and this woman. Or the Sefer Teda. Before a Sefer starts writing letters in the Sefer Teda, they say, L'shem, mitzvah, see the Sefer Teda. I'm doing this for the mitzvah, writing a Sefer Teda. And that is no good. If you didn't do that, if the letters are not kosher. The get wouldn't be kosher. But, but, but daya, it's enough. At the beginning of writing, let's see, he's going to sit down now and write for four hours. So at the beginning, he doesn't have to say it every hour. Beginning of the writing, when he says it, it's enough. I'm writing it for the sanctity of the Sefer Teda. Or for his name, the husband's name, and the wife's name in the get. Therefore, he says like this. When a person learns many hours straight, he should meditate into this preparation, this meditation of why I'm doing this at least every hour. Why every hour do you do it? And he says like this. This is a very interesting concept in, in Kabbalah. Every hour has a different combination of Hashem's name. And he says what it is. Am Cheres is a different revelation of godliness. Me'elim Salyenim from the higher worlds. Lahachis Atachtenim to give life to the lower worlds. Am Shachas Achayish Abishosh Elifanel and the life of, let's say you're learning from nine to ten. So, okay. So, from nine to ten, there's a unique revelation of Hashem from nine to ten. Then, ten o'clock, that old revelation is gone. Now, 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock comes on a new revelation of Hashem. Okay. Uh, together with that, all the learning of that particular person. And I'm going to read the Hebrew and I'm going to explain this very interesting concept. In every hour of the day, 
Shailet Sidif Echot is c- c- controlling one combination of the names. Of the 12 hours during the day. And at night, it's the name of Allah Dalad Nunya. Meaning like this. In, in, in the lessons of Tanya, he, he says it very uh, clearly. There's four letters of God's name. Yudke Vavke. Okay? So even though two Hays are the same, so some people want to say, so therefore there's three letters of God's name, Yud K Vav, because the second He is the same as the first letter. Now, when you have three letters, you can make 12 combinations. Let's say you have Aleph, Beis, Gimel, right? So you can make Aleph, Beis, Gimel. You can make Beis, Aleph, Gimel. You can make Gimel, Beis, Aleph, Gimel, Aleph, Beis. You can make 12 combinations. If you have four letters, you can make 24 combinations of letters. That's a mathematical thing that means. Not only in Torah, it's mathematical. Two letters make two words. Aleph, base, you can make Aleph, base, base, Aleph. Three letters make 12. Four letters make 24. Okay? And all the combinations of letters. So what does it mean during the day is 12 hours? So the Rebbe writes, there's really 24 combinations during the day of God's name, Yud Kei But 12 are dominating and 12 basically, what does he use the expression? Um, he says, only 12 predominate during the 12 hours of the day, 12 uh, dominate during the, 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 the night. Okay? So you have the letters Aleph, Dalud, Nun, Yud. That's the night revelations of Godliness. It's not the same level as Yud, Kei, Vav, Kei, which is the Tetragram, the holy levels of God's name. Therefore, there's 24 combinations of God's name for the day, 24 combinations of God's name for the lot, for night for the, the four letters. But only 12 the Rebbe writes are dominating. Like the Rebbe writes, the other 12 have no connection at all to time. Whatever. Okay, it's connected to the 12 stitches on, on the, underneath the fill in the whole Megillah. So the Rebbe writes, if every hour of the day is a new combination of God's name, a new combination of God's name means it's a new revelation of God's name. So if this hour is coming down a new revelation of godliness, so then you need then you need to have the kavod again. Then I'm doing this to connect Hashem. It's very interesting. It's a famous story. When Al Rebbe was in prison, the Yutas Kislev story. So the prisons wasn't, weren't like today's country clubs. Okay, the prison were dark dungeons. There was no light. There was no windows. Okay, they wanted to test. Now, the Rebbe's brilliance and his greatness. So one time, one of the officers came in in the middle of the day, in the middle of the day, and he said to the Rebbe, why are you not sleeping? It's night. And the Rebbe said to him, no, I don't remember the exact time the Rebbe said, the Rebbe said to him, it's 2.12 in the afternoon. The guy was shocked. The guy, he was shocked. Because there was no light, there was no difference in the light in the prison cell between day and night. So he said to the Rebbe, how did you know that? You're right. But how did you know it was exactly 212? The Rebbe told him each hour of the day has different combinations of God's name. So by feeling the revelation, the, the revelations of the God's name, I know exactly which hour it is. I don't need a clock. I don't need a watch. And therefore, the Rebbe knew day and, time, day and night apart when, when by the revelations of Yud Kei and at night, it's all of Dalud Nun Yud. So the Rebbe was able to figure that out. He didn't need, in fact, it says, the kids say in the Bar Mitzvah Maimon, the Medrash says that when Meshach Rabbeinu was in Har Sinai for the 40 days, 
How did he know when it was day and night? See, he heard when the Malachim said Kadesh, it was day. And when they said Baruch, it was night. When they said Kadesh, 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 Hashem, Tzvayis, Moe, Cholar, Zekvay, Dimesh, Rebbein, it was day. And when they said Baruch, Kadesh, Hashem, Moe, Kadesh, Hashem, Moe, it was night. So the Deacon don't need the uh, watches, clock so much. They fear, figure it out. Okay, so we're starting now four lines from the back. What is the purpose? What is the intent of having this kavano with mesidus nafish la Hashem? I they tell feel by davening and learning is la halitz nitzus alokusha b'seicha by elevating the godly source which is within it lemkeda. Back to its source. Why? The purpose is, he said, what's the ultimate meditation of I'm doing it to become united with Hashem? Does Hashem really need it? Think about it. Does Hashem really need the fact that we are uniting ourselves with Hashem? He's out Rebbe says, because Hashem wants to, this, this enjoyment. I'm going to read a little bit and explain this. Like the joy of a king. When his only child, he has an only child, and the kid comes back to the father, the king, when he goes out of imprisonment or jail. You can imagine the simcha that the king, the father, has when his only son is released from prison and comes home. When the neshama is davening and learning, and it's mesidus nefesh, I'm giving up my neshama. Like we learned before in the parish. The Adrebbe says, Davin Amal says, I'm elevating my soul to you. Elecha Hashem. To you, Hashem, nafshi es, I'm giving my soul, mesidus nefesh. I'm dominating the soul over the body. The soul now is controlling the body. The godly soul is learning and davening. That is a tremendous pleasure for Hashem. Not that it has to be that way. Hashem created in the way Hashem wants that we should cause him enjoyment. How do we cause Hashem enjoyment? In fact, it says in Chsidis that the neshama coming into the body, what's the purpose of the neshama coming into the body? To become a Baal Tshuva. The neshama in Gan Eden is a tzaddik. It's in Gan Eden. It's in basking in godliness, learning and doing, you know, no mitzvahs, but learning and basking in godliness. What is the purpose of the descent of the Nishaman to the world? To become a Baal Tshuva. What do you mean to become a Baal Tshuva? The Chassidus explains very simply. The Rambam explains, there's an argument in the Gemara, who is greater, a Tzaddik or a Baal Tshuva? And the Halacha, the Rambam rules, even though it's questionable why, based on the laws of Gemara, but the Rambam rules, and this is the accepted opinion, a Baal Tshuva is greater than a Tzaddik. And the Rambam says, why is a Baal Tshuva greater than a Tzadik? And I'm paraphrasing the Rambam. Bottom line is, a Tzadik is eso, eso, same old, same old. He's always a Tzadik. He's always a goody, goody. He's always doing good. There's no new, there's nothing new in the Tzadik. A Baal Tshuva became, like the Rambam says, became a new person. Something new. Something new people enjoy. The Mashuk Siddhis gives is what's called Sipara Medaberis. In English, it's called a parrot. Sipara Medaberis literally means a bird that talks. A parrot, parakeet. Everybody goes crazy about a parakeet. Why? Because, think about it. A person talks much better than a parrot. When people talk, you talk, be quiet. And when the parrot talks, you have to listen to the parrot. 
What's, what's so unique about a parrot? A person talks much, much better than a parrot. The answer is, a person talking, that's normal. A bird talking, that's unique. And something unique, people enjoy. It's a change. You have a simple, now it's summertime, yeah? A lot of people, as we see, are, are not here in town. People go away on vacation. Yeah, I promise you, your home is more comfortable than the place you're going on vacation. Even if you eat out in the restaurants, the food at home is much better. The truth of the matter, life at home is much better than the vacation place. What's the big deal about vacation place? It's one simple thing. It's a change of scenery. It's a change. It's something new. Something new people like. Why, why in Gashmis, why in the physical world people like something new? Because in godliness, Hashem likes new things. Why does Hashem like about you, what Ramam says? Because yesterday this person was a sinner. And today he's becoming close to Hashem. That's a change. That's a simcha. Hashem doesn't get simcha from the shamas in Ganeiden. Because for them, that's the normal thing to do. What does Hashem gain simcha from? When a neshama in a body goes out of exile in their body and the, and the nefesh is in the animal soul. And the soul is coming home to Hashem by davening and learning. That's the simcha of Hashem. And that's what Hashem loves. And that's the kavana person should have. The kavana person has should have is Hashem loves this. And that's why I'm doing it. I love Hashem so much, I want to make him feel good. Okay, so he says it up that way. I, I want him to do it because Hashem feels good by doing it. And he says in Tapu Nuntes, Tapu 218, this kavana of making Hashem happy because it's something new. Yamitas the emes lamita is true, and the genuinely, genuinely true, the gami completely true. Bechol nefesh mi yisrael in every single nefesh, bechol eitz uvechol shah every hour and every second. Where is this real from? Me avativ is from the natural instinctive love she yerushalanu me aviseinu that we got this as inheritance. You are a child of Avram, Yitzchok, and Yaakov. You are a Gerd according to Aloch, which is also says Ben Avram, Yitzchok, and Yaakov. They have this innately within them, this love of Hashem to make Hashem happy. And that's what the person does. But it's not enough just having it in, in the, by nature. We have to establish times. This brain name, the Gedulah Hashem, to meditate into the greatness of Hashem. Lahasik to grasp Hashem. The Tchilu or the with fear and love intellectually. Maybe Hashem will give him the merit to really get it. So in this paddock, now, the Rebbe is explaining in this paragraph in the Parakam a little bit before. Now, the Rebbe is explaining why the foundation is Yira. Yes, you need Ava, because you need two wings. But the primary thing is Yira. What is Yira? Fear. Awe, or, in different words, it's Bittu. Fear is synonymous with the concept of I'm nullified. In the presence of the king, I have awe and fear of the king. I'm nullified in the presence of the king. That yira is primary in Aveda Hashem, to have bittul to Hashem. And he elaborated that even at the bittul, even though you need Ava, but the primary thing is the bittul, and to understand why I'm doing it, because Hashem wants me to do it, not because I'm gaining great things out of it. Hashem wants me to do it. And then he elaborated in the different levels of davening, the levels of the yira, 
natural, instinctive, or is it the meditated, giving birth, meditation, giving birth to, to love and fear? But the bottom line is, the point of Mesir Snapish is giving up what we want for Hashem. That's Bittu. I'm doing, instead of doing what I enjoy, right? I'm doing it, I'm doing something that Hashem enjoys. What does Hashem enjoy? Well, my godly soul who's imprisoned and captivated in, in captivity by the body and the animal soul, and this soul goes ahead and learns and davens, that's a tremendous pleasure. So I'm doing, instead of giving my pleasures to myself, I'm doing it fresh. But now he starts Tarek Rambay. There's also a very fundamental aspect. Based on what he explained before about the Yira Tato in the lower level of fear of Hashem, meaning not the meditated level of Hashem, of yir, fear of Hashem, but the natural instinctive fear of Hashem. Yuv and Hete will understand properly, properly, Masha calls it the Gemara. The Gemara says like this Al Posik and the Posik. In the next, not this Shabbos, this Pasha, next week's Pasha. Yisrael, Hashem now, Yidin, what is it? What is it already that Hashem is asking from you? Hashem, only to fear. The Torah says, like, Hey guys, listen, what does God want from you already? He only wants you to fear Him. So the Gemara asks, Is fear such an easy thing? The Gemara in Baruch says, Hashem makes it sound. What's the big deal? All I'm asking you is to fear me. I mean, is fear of God, you know, fear of God is that God's presence is continuously visible to us and so on. So the Gemara answer is a very strange answer. The Gemara says, In, yeah, the Gabi Mesha, Moshe Rabbeinu, Milsa Zutra Sihi. It's nothing. It's very easy. For him, it's simple. So the Alter Rebbe says, Lucherde in a moving patirus. The Gemara's answer doesn't make sense. Why? Because, first of all, Chumish Dvar and Meshe Rabbeinu is speaking. Okay? And Meshe Rabbeinu says the following. Ba'ata Yisrael, now Jews. Mo Hashem alokach Hashem imach. What did God want from you? So it's not Meshe Rabbeinu. Meshe Rabbeinu is speaking to the Jews and giving them over a message from Hashem. Now Jews, what does Hashem want from you? Only to fear him. So the Gemara asks this fear such an easy thing. And the Gemara says, yeah, for Meshir Rabbeinu it's easy. So the Rebbe says that the answer is not understood. What does that answer mean? We're not talking about Meshir Rabbeinu. We're talking about every single Jew. He says, the Indian or the Indian like this. And this is a very fundamental teaching of Tanya that the Rebbe uses a lot. And the Rebbe used the same concept about Mashiach. And he says like this. From Nefesh to Nefesh be based Yisrael. Every single Jew. Yesh ba mevchinus meishe Rabbeinu all of us Every Jew has a level of meishe Rabbeinu within them. Why? Ki hu mi shiva harayim. Meishe Rabbeinu is one of the seven shepherds. Mar says there are seven shepherds. And these seven shepherds were giving, they're, they're the ones that fed the Jews, right? They're the one that, Shiva Arayim, the ones that, the seven people that fed shepherds. They feed, they fed the Jews. What does it mean feeding the Jews? He says, Hainu, Shemam Shechadas, he was the one that brought down the level of Das. The Chlod is Yisrael to the entire Jewish nation. Laid as Hashem. To have knowledge of God. Kol Echad Lefi Hasogas Nishmosai. Based on the ability of his Neshama. Meshar Shalomailo and its source above. Meaning like this. Meshar Abenu. The Medrash says there are seven Rayim, seven shepherds. 
anointed anointed ones. But there's seven seven rain, the seven Ushpizen. Abraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Yosef, David, Moshe, and Ari. Okay, the question is the order, different orders, are these all there, whatever. What do you mean the seven shepherds? Shepherd is one that feeds the flock. Feeds the flock. What does it mean in a practical sense? We're just going to start this. And again, next week, there are no classes, Monday and Wednesday. The following Monday, there's also no class, but two weeks from tonight, there is a class. The mission will finish this concept because it's a very important concept. The purpose of a shepherd is to make sure the flock eats. What is a spiritual shepherd? For the Jews to digest their food. What is their food? So I'm going to start it now and we're going to finish next time. Every Jew has emuna, belief. Every Jew has das. Das does not mean understanding. There's chachma bin and das is wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. There's Chachma and Bina. Chachma and Bina means the understanding level. Das is feeling that Chachma and Bina. Das is the key, as Alter Rebbe explains in Paragimel of Tanya. Loshin va'odam yodas chavam loshin is kashus is chabrus. Das means binding yourself. Finding yourself is not when something is external. External is not you and one, becoming one with it. When something becomes internalized within the person, then they become what? Then they feel it. Clothing, which surround the person, superficial, you don't feel. Internally, you don't feel your clothing. Food that you digest, that you feel. When a person's hungry, that yesterday's fast, right? They feel it. You feel it. Das is the internalization of the amuna of the Jew in a way that they feel it. And may should have been, every Jew has das. But the function of may should have been is to internalize that feeling that every Jew feels godliness. And there's a big difference between knowing what's right and wrong versus feeling what's right and wrong. And Rashi says at the beginning of Achimates, why does Hashem say, don't go into the uh, after the two children of Aaron died. So as she says, a marshal, there was a marshal of a sick person. The doctor said to him, Don't eat this food because if you eat the food, you might die. And then there was another patient who had a close relative that died from that food. And the doctor said to him, Don't eat the food because then you're going to die like that person of yours died. That's the difference between knowing and feeling. I might know something's wrong and I'll do it anyway. But if you feel something's wrong, then you're not going to do it. Okay, we're going to leave it here. And Mr. Shem, in two weeks, we can continue. So then everybody have a great Shabbos in the midst of Shem. The next class will be on Wednesday, the 24th of, of 28th of August. So then everybody have a great time.